SPIE presents the Advancing the Laser series, honoring 50 years of laser achievements. So I'm uh, Tayaba Hassan. I'm, the professor, I'm a professor of dermatology at Harvard Medical School and a professor of health science technology at the MIT Harvard program. And I work at the Mass General Hospital where I lead a program on photodynamic therapy. Photodynamic therapy ha happens to be a treatment modality now. It's a photochemistry based modality where the idea, the basic idea is to take a chemical and excite it with light and the most efficient and traditionally the, uh, the light source that's been used for this has been a laser with a wavelength specific excitation leads to the energization of these chemicals which then can lead then uh, result in, in killing cells around which this excitation has happened and so traditionally the f uh, focus has been on using photodynamic therapy for the treatment of cancer. Photodynamic therapy is of course um, a modality that where laser or light the photon is used to initiate chemistry and the chemistry that you initiate, in fact, goes and initiates the biology. And the biology is what we're trying to initiate to lead to the end point of killing the cell, or sometimes, in some cases, stimulating the cell to do something different from what it's doing normally. So, so that's actually a very key point. And um, again, the laser comes in handy in two aspects in this. One is the tunability, so if you want to excite so if you imagine a cancer sitting here, it's got different components and there are many wavelengths that might be able to excite the endogenous molecules in the body. And what you want to do is you want to excite only the chemical that you have delivered in the tumor. And that really is uh, wavelength, having a specific wavelength that matches the uh, s that chemicals absorption spectrum so that you excite or do localized damage is key and so th that's one place the second thing is before you even put this in into into application in biology once you make this photosensitizing molecule the chemical that you use in photodynamic therapy you need to make sure that the chemistry or the photophysics is appropriate so that it will in fact initiate the right chemistry that will initiate the right biology. And then there's a lot of chemistry that's required here to in fact design these molecules such that you might actually be able to deliver it to the right site in the, uh, in the uh, body. So if you know, you're trying to deliver it only into a small portion of the eye, you want this to happen uh, is more specifically so you don't damage the retina and other parts of the eye. Similarly, if you've got your cancer sitting on a vocal cord, you want to destroy the cancer without destroying the vocal cord. So there are some very delicate sites where photodynamic therapy might actually have a role. For photodynamic therapy, the ability for these lasers to sort of be portable is, is key. And that's why the diode lasers have been a big boon for research because then you can actually move it from you know, place to place, from different benches, and in fact, to different institutions for collaborations. And I think that is a key uh, you know, development that has come through with the di development of the la invention of the diode lasers. However, even now, the mainstay in the clinic is these big lasers, and it would really be uh, a tremendous step forward if smaller lasers, more portable, could be developed with high power so that you could do the treatments that need this, for example, doing esophageal cancer, for doing um, uh, lung cancers. Now, s the routine esophageal cancer can be treated with diode lasers, and that's already, uh, that step has been taken. And it would be much, it would be nice if this thing moved even further and we had smaller lasers with high power. The applications that this is all going into are not just cancer, and the, th the cancer focus these days is pancreatic cancer, ovarian cancer, and prostate in the group, but also infectious diseases, where I think the next big step in photodynamic therapy is going to be a, um, the application to infectious infections and infectious diseases. Uh, and that will range all the way from uh, gum disease 
to the, some of the more um, uh, complicated ones such as tuberculosis. So the impact is going to come in you know, different places in cancer, which has been the main pursuit of, for most researchers, but also non-cancer applications such as infections and some cardiovascular applications. So I would say that the uh, discovery of the laser has been absolutely pivotal to the success of photodynamic therapy, even as we pull towards looking at, uh, move towards looking at simpler light sources.